Hello everyone, uh, Kirby Volt here, and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby Star Allies Guest Star Allies Go! On the last episode, we finished up level 1, and we got DDD as our new friend, so I hope uh, you're excited to see DDD for a lot of rooms now because he's gonna be here. And I actually don't recall what I did for this first room, so if I had held on stuff, then I held on to stuff, but... <laughs> I think what I did is I, I held on a little bit as far as, like, not, not so much hold on, but, you know, like, purposely delayed to give a little more uh, understanding as to what's going on. It's like kind of rushed into those last two episodes. But for those of you who are just joining, we are going through the entirety of Guest Star Allies, only the helpers from the main game. No dream friends yet. And in order to go and properly get through everything, rather than having to go through the game 24 times, since there's 24 playable helpers, we are instead going through every possible room that could be showing up within the game. And by doing that, I'm kind of stitching them together, and so I'm doing post-commentary as we begin. So, guess where I'll go? Broom Hatter. Yeah! So, Broomhatter, I have Parasol LD, who was the MVP the last episode, who got DDD. And I also have changed up our Dream Friends a little bit. So, in the last episodes, we had Ritku and Kine, but now, depending on the ally, we'll have different Dream Friends all accompanying us as well. So, I brought Adeline Ribbon with, because, you know, they're adorable and uh, very cool as well. And I kind of figured it was a bit fitting, because we kind of have the uh, Shinomomura uh, characters right here. We got DDD, we got Waddle Dee, we got Adeline and Ribbon, and then we also technically have Pitch, uh, Choo Choo, and Nago. So uh, we're, we're technically only just missing Riku and Kine, but uh, I didn't want to put too many Dream Friends in, so we're going to always keep uh, at least one non-Dream Friend with us at all times. And uh, I'm going here to show this off. There is no upgrade here, and I'm pretty sure... Give me a second. That there are no upgrades here. I totally did not... not plan. <laughs> if it's a double negative, that means it's right, correct? <laughs> I actually brought my notes up this time, so I can actually informatively tell you what's going to happen, hopefully. Except for whatever I recorded, because I recorded sections, and I went, let's make them, let's make them long enough, so it seems like we gave enough screen time, and Brute Man is really happy. But now we're gonna switch over to our next guest star ally go, which is Bordon. And Bordon retains Rick Koo and Kine. I kind of thought that was a good idea, because uh, Koo is also a bird, and can take to the heights really well, and uh, I like Rick Koo and Kine. So there. <laughs> shush, shush, shush. Oh yeah, and you can always you can always make Kine do the flop at least once. It's just you need to actually be playing as them to do the flop properly, but oh well. And you can also see, this is the start of me trying to have... I'm gonna break the wall of immersion now, if there was any to begin with. <laughs> I am trying to keep it, the one other friend that's not a dream friend with us, try to keep it related to either the friend we previously had, or the next uh, guest star. So we were just playing as Broom Hatter, so now we have Broom Hatter in the party. It makes sense, right? And yeah, that was our first upgrade. That is the first upgrade you can get in general. It's within this room, which is the attack one, and as usual, there will be the icons up in the upper right hand corner at the beginning of each room to tell you which characters can go here. Not many characters can go to this room, so, uh, well, this is the very first upgrade you can get in general, it is not the very first upgrade that most characters will be getting. Same goes for this one, because now we have, uh, Sir Kibble here, and also Raccoon Kine. I guess I decided to just keep Raccoon Kine. I don't... I, I forget what I did specifically, because I tried to, for some friends who we did not play with, in the episode one, I gave them new star allies, or dream friends, rather. But some of them, I kind of went, ah, I'll just keep Raccoon Kine, because I like Raccoon Kine. And we do need, we specifically need this ability. Like, there's no other way to get this upgrade. You need to have a cutter and uh, bluster ability onto it. Which is why only, like, uh, let's see. I mean, you'll see it in the, in the upper right-hand corner, of course. But it's available for everyone who goes to this room, which is only three characters. And you notice that one of them is Sir Kibble, and the other two can give out Bluster. 
which I think are the only two friends that can give up Bluster in the entire game. For such a powerful element, I guess that does make sense that they kind of limited it. Comparative to, like, water can be given out. Uh, I guess I never really thought about that, depending on the different uh, friends, what kind of elementals they can give out. Huh. Also, Rarity! Another Dream Friend Rod! Because this room is so lightly trafficked between all the rest of the Star Allies, not many characters get to go to here. So I decided to use this opportunity to give us a Gooey. And I believe we get rid of Riku and Kain to keep that synergy going of having Broomhatter here. And hey, now we have Gooey, who is another Shimamura character. So, you know, uh, we're going off the previous room where we had Adeline and Ribbon. Now we got another one, so trying to get the whole gang here, which would actually kind of be impossible now that I think about it, because there's too many characters to do that. Unless, it could be like DDD, Gooey, Riku and Kain, and Broomhatter? Oh, no! Because then you're missing Adeline and Riven! And there they are again! <laughs> so, Broomhatter is back once again in the lead. And I guess I just wanted to sweep a little bit, clean off a little bit again, show off that good stuff. You'll also notice that Broomhatter got very lucky. Broomhatter, because Broomhatter does go to that previous room, also got the ability to use the... Dream Friend Rod, and as such, Gooey is part of Broomhatter's team now. So, I was actually very close to the team I was just describing. <laughs> and our first instance of the Friend Circle in uh, Guest Star Allies Go. I think Gooey's way of lining up in the Friend Circle is super hilarious. Uh, let's let's see, Adeline. All right, <laughs> but I can barely tell a Broomhatter's even there, and DDD takes up the most space. Fun fact is that if you are playing multiplayer, I'm sure by this point you've been playing this game, you may have already played in multiplayer, but uh, when you're doing stuff like the friend train and... Maybe not the friend train, but at least with the friend circle, all people... Everyone... All people. Everyone who is playing has the ability to use the jump button. So be very careful because you could accidentally just jump and then someone else jumps and then, you know, bad times for all. <laughs> and here we go again with my totems. I like my totems. Totem time. Totem time, all the time. Triforce Sears is a good game. Oh, I also want to give... Oh, okay, that's what I was trying to do. I guess? I mean, Bluster Hammer is good, so why not... Oh, oh, I know what I'm doing now. Shush, 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 shush. And I'm being very specific about the order. It has to be Gooey, then Adeline, then DDD, and then we fly on the hammer. Away we go! Shush, shush, shush. Bluster Hammer is great. The only annoying thing about a lot of Bluster attacks is that it does give you that extra vertical uh, bit, especially if you're trying to attack something that's right next to you. It's not super helpful, but uh, it can be on occasion. And also, hey, Poppy Bros Jr., how's it going? And we have Bluster with him as well. You know what that means? It's time for the Flying Bombs! You also notice that Poppy Bros Jr., as you probably could deduce by the previous areas we've been to, that he was not in a lot of the rooms, so he only has one upgrade thus far. But I'm sure we can get some more for him. And for everyone else here. So, going from here, we do have an enemy clear area. Just beating up some Waddle Dees at the beach. I know, very mean. We shouldn't attack the adorable Waddle Dees, but they're kind of in our way, and we gotta do that, unfortunately. That's just how it goes. But maybe their bandana friend could get into a game of some kind that may or may not have percentiles. Per percentiles! That is... I am great at making words. Percentages. There we go. And I do believe we need Burning Leo, so bye bye Broomhatter, unfortunately. And we're just gonna wait this out. <laughs> Look at how floaty those bombs are. <laughs> And then in this orange door, which is not available for all characters, so future me thank you again for the great editing that you'll be doing for showing off these rooms. I don't know, should I call them rooms or should I call them areas? I don't know. But since we have Adeline here, she can draw Ice Dragon. Ice Dragon can freeze that. And uh, bippity-boo, we get what we need. 
the game wants you to use Parasol Waddle Dee here, and Parasol Waddle Dees are abundant to find, but uh, I didn't want to get a Parasol Waddle Dee. And we also needed the fire. And I'm pretty sure we had no fire. The Poppy Rose Jr.'s bombs do not count as fire, and fortunately, DDD's Hammer Flip does also not count as fire for some reason, even though I think it has in previous games. Maybe I'm just not using it right. That's totally, that's totally a thing that could be happening. Anyways, I like to fly on the propeller bomb, because it's just really cool to just sit up there and fly with it. And again, we can look at these great backgrounds. I'm looking at this with poor quality right now, because I'm doing playback on the actual editor, but uh, the backgrounds do look very nice. I, the water is so gorgeous! My gosh, come on. I want a sequel to this game right away, or a 3D Kirby game, or Hale doing some other kind of game, which is, it would just be fantastic. And hello, Nesp is here, and Nesp also brought a friend with, because Nesp initially appeared in Kirby Planet Robobots. I decided that a Kirby Planet Robobot character would be a good idea, so Susie is here. This is also an enemy clear area place as well, and it does its job for all the characters, as you probably saw from the little thing I put up at the top. Thanks, future me. <laughs> I honestly do not care for when they put the enemy clear areas underwater. They're just, they're kind of annoying to get through. Nest is the exception. I like using characters that have range attacks underwater, which is very rare. Nest and kind of Poppy Bros have range attacks. I think there's a few other characters, but for the most part, they only get the one attack, and it's their, whatever their neutral attack is while they're on the ground outside of water, and usually those attacks aren't very good for underwater. And I know, I know that's supposed to be the hindrance and everything, but that's what kind of makes Nest really nice for this section is because this neutral is literally guiding this bit of uh, energy everywhere, so you can easily just kind of plow through some of the stuff. I also like this uh, this rock. It's a shape of a C. I don't know if that has any relevance, but it looks cool. Hey, look! It's Paris of Waddle D and Waddle Do and Bandana Waddle D. So the immersion's been broken, I don't keep having the same characters up all the time, but you should remember this team. This is the team that uh, actually beat DDD in the previous episode. And I think I keep a ba uh, bandana. I keep Harris of D to this team for the duration of the entire uh, Guest Star Allies run. Ooh, actually I don't think I do because of a problem here. So, no one has ice, we need to light this. And, uh... Actually, well, yeah, so, hmm, I, what? I think I try to figure this out. I think I try to use DDD, but it doesn't work, unfortunately, so let's see how that goes. I'm gonna, let's see, can we do it? Yeah, see, like, his hammer flip, I think what happens is the fire is at the tip of the hammer, but that's too high to actually hit the fuse. So, unfortunately, I cannot use it this way, because since I'm playing as Parasol Waddle D, I could easily just walk over and get that solved. But since I'm not, I have to have unfortunately bid adieu to one of these fine gents. But I'm pretty sure I can just get one of them back later, so it won't be that big of a deal, but hey, Burning Leo, help out now, please, thanks. And also that Burning Leo over there. Maybe he could help out. You never know. Yeah, gotta be very careful. There's even, like, a smidge of water left. It will take the fuse out, and then you have to do it all over. Now, if we had Adeline in here with us, it would be easy. We just freeze the, uh... Or if we had Chili with us, or even Roach, All can freeze that. Really nice. And hey, look, it's a button! No, it is not a dream friend rod. It's health, though, which is definitely needed right now for Waddle Dee and his, uh, team of also Waddle Dee. And King DVD. And Leo, who's just here, I guess. Shush, shush, shush. I mean, we know why he's here. I had to use him again to that uh, orange door, but still. And then I think I, th I thought something crazy that there was, like, another Waddle Dew over here, but that's clearly incorrect. So I don't know why I went back here, but hey, you know. Gives Paris OLD some more screen time, and we all love Paris OLD. Oh, I think I want to... Oh. Yeah, give him elementals. Bernie Leo, help out. Thanks. Sizzle Spear. Oh, good enough. I'm just 
DDD can give we can give DDD element handles later. And hey, guess what? Two pairs of Waddle Ds. Ha ha! Now we have, have an all Waddle D team. It only took having two parasols and one bandana. Who sometimes uses the parasols. So for all we know, bandana Waddle D could be a parasol Waddle D. Also, when it cuts through the waterfall like that, that's really cool looking. We're gonna open it? Let's open it. Yeah, we get to go with bandana Waddle D. The best Waddle D. Shh, shh, shh. Just kidding, he's not here anymore. We have Wester. And Wester, who technically came from Planet Robobot, as I researched in editing last episode, whip ability uh, debuted in Return to Dreamland, though. So while Wester may not be from Return to Dreamland, Magalar sure is. So hey, Magalar now. So I'm trying to essentially get as many dream friends to show up as possible. So we can kind of get exposure to all the dream friends, and also later go play as them, because I'll be doing that too. I really should have thought this out more through. <laughs> shush, shush, shush! It's alright, though. We're having fun time in the beach. And Chef Kawasaki is dead. That's what he gets for trying to voice Kaboo in the anime? Okay, so real talk here. So, but whatever I'm doing right now is fine. Wester and his pals are having fun. I'm sure we're going to get to that really quickly, but... Am I the only one who actually really did not care for the Kirby anime from 2001? Like, it's just... Eh. I know some people get mad at me when I talk about it on Twitter, but I'm just kind of like, I don't know, I just feel like it was a huge letdown for what it could have been. And I get that it's hard to do, like, a show based on a game and everything, but still. King Duty, raise your gosh darn hammer. King Duty, raise your hammer. Man, that took forever. <laughs> shush, shush. Okay, Meg Megalore. There we go. Let's see, my, my... Oh, okay, I guess we're gonna go in the ship now. <laughs> Whee! With all the stuff that's been added to Kirby, the series in general, since uh, Sakurai's departure, I'd be up for a new, anim a new anime with a lot of these other characters, like Megalore and some of the other characters they didn't use, like Adeline, or, you know, actually utilizing Riku and Kai instead of just being stereotypes. And... whatever, sorry. <laughs> ah, I'm just not a big fan of that cartoon. Anyways... Bonkers is in it, though, so that's cool. Anyways, Bonkers is here, and he is here to melt everything. He also has Adeline with him. I don't know why I brought Adeline with him, but, you know, he's here now. And now Bonkers will control another guy with a hammer for your amusement. I'm actually doing this room very slowly, because it's a very short room. It's a... There I go again, because technically this is not a room, because you're not enclosed in anything, except for that one part right there. This is an area. Gotta call these areas. Gosh darn it. And here's Bonkers flying away on a ferry. And also, probably not, like, Adeline, are you okay? Like, Bonkers is, like, really heavy and probably should not be on your head. But, okay, yeah. Yeah, we're not getting in there. I'll tell you that right now. You're still not getting in there, because Bonkers is huge. It is kind of really cool, though, like, with the reflections of the ice stack there. You can see the stars there. You can also probably see Bonkers and Adeline, too. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, <laughs> you can't even make your summons in there because it's such a close, enclosed space. Yeah, Bonkers is mad. He wanted to see art. He came to this art gallery, ice show thing, and never mind. Well, Jammer Jab's here now. And Jammer Jab technically debuted in this game, along with Staff, but... Megalore, because they both have eyes in weird spots. Jammer Jab's, uh, jam Jammer, Jammer Jab. Jammer Jab's design is interesting because he has that Meta Knight slash Megalore slash, uh, Wester slash Biospark look of, uh, the eyes kind of hidden. But his are more rounded compared to the other characters who have more of those kind of Kirby-shaped eyes. Oval, oval eyes technically, but I mean Kirby-shaped eyes works because they the same shape of eye that Kirby has. And if you're wondering, like, whoa, 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 
how come so many characters seem to lose upgrades or like not have any upgrades? Well, level two is very interesting for guest star allies. There's a lot of characters who just skip entire segments, and you've probably been noticing that on the upper uh, right hand corner. But technically speaking, looking at my entire like cheat sheet, we have not gone to many rooms that all characters can go to. Like, outside of this room right now, and I think a previous one as well, we have not seen everything that they're at, or rather, not all the characters have gone to the rooms that they need to go to. Or, that makes no sense! Not all characters... I lost my train of thought. And I lost it again, and I don't even know where we are now. Burning Leo. Okay, yeah, wow, okay. I, I even thought we were way further ahead. I was looking, and I was like, oh crap, did I miss something? No. Okay, so, what I was trying to say is, this section, level 2-1, as I'm calling it, of guests or allies, all of the allies, helpers, friends, etc., go to very different areas. But cumulative together, they make a very large portion. So, I think when we get to 2 2, we'll see more overlap. But for now, there isn't as much overlap, which is why they don't have as many upgrades. Because if you look at, like, uh, Sir, er, Sir, Sir Kibble. No, <laughs> Sir Burning Leo, I guess if you put on some armor, you become Sir Kibble now. I am full of it. Shh, <laughs> If you look at Burning Leo's time, it's only almost at 6 minutes. This video is clearly not at 6 minutes, so you can tell by that that he's probably not gone to too many areas. Okay. I finally made that make some sense of sense. <laughs> and then I said that, and that totally made sense. Shush, 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 shush. It's alright. And we got bonkers because I wanted to try to preserve continuity again. And I don't think that works out, but... Hey, everybody! He gets fire! Also, why does Rick lift his head for that? I'm burning Leo. I'm not someone who can give him curling. What? Why did Rick lift his head there? That was really confusing. Because typically, if you're an elemental that they can't use, they'll just give you a question mark. But I guess he's not doing that. And also, back to using King DDD as bonkers uh, mounts. <laughs> Yeah, that hammer throw is really nice, and I really wish that Kirby could use that move without actually getting rid of the hammer. Because, I mean, at this point, if you're just going to say we can play as ZD and Bonkers, who can also do that move and they don't lose it, then, you know, the whole idea of hammer is way too overpowered, then we can't... For this move, Kirby should lose the hammer, I think is kind of... It's kind of silly. But, you know, that's just me on the matter. And yeah, I was taken in... So, the background here, like, the the initial foreground background, if that makes sense, is really cool. But the back, the back, back, backgrounds... That's three backgrounds. The back, background... <laughs> I'm an intelligible mess. Let me have you know. Almost about 85.7.2% of the time. Which is not a real number, probably. Also, Ice Dragon, because we're in an ice place. Echo's Edge is a really good stage. Its music is really good. I know a lot of people think that the other ice stage of Thro Planet Frostack overshadows it music-wise, but nah, I think Echo's Edge is as good, if not maybe a little better than that one. Visual-wise, uh, Planet Frostack has Echo's Edge beat, have it. Visual-wise, Planet Frostack beats Echo's Edge. There we go. But, uh... Music-wise, I actually like this track a bit more. It's really nice for the calming as we fight up all these guys, fight them up, beat them up, look at the nice ice in the background, get a speed up. Como decides to throw this angrily! Thanks, Como. <laughs> it's almost like I could probably stop doing the audio and just redo it, but I don't want to. You are getting my uncompressed thoughts because I don't actually have to play the game right now. I had to record it, and I'm not looking forward to having to record the other parts because 
Three dash one is really, really long, and I need to get on that. But hey, then you won't have a video for today if I didn't record this section. So yay! Bye, bouncy ties. I wish I knew more of the names of the of the enemies from recent Kirby games, because like I have a lot of the old ones ingrained in my head now. Thanks, partially in fact, to Kirby's Dream Land 2's uh, bad ending, where it just tells you the names of all the characters that show up in that game. But oh hey, Parasoldi and Jammer Jab and Megalore, which we already knew Megalore was here, but whatever. <laughs> and Megalore is a Jammer Jab when we saw Jammer Jab earlier. But hey, let's make a bridge. So, Friend Bridge, the first time we're seeing it in uh, Guess Our Allies, uh, a few things. First of all, peep, everyone can control the height of it, but one of the coolest things I think that is really subtle, but it's so cool, they use the HD rumble for the bridge. So depending on which section of the bridge you're on, you will feel the pitter-patter of the Monkey D's feet as it walks over you. It's really cool. It's a really cool sensation to feel. Uh, w when it happens. Now, technically speaking, the door to end the level is right down there, but there is a secret. And I think this secret was added in an update. Future me, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But basically, if you notice, if you keep looping around this, it keeps putting out more of these hearts. And so if you keep looping around that top, eventually, a door will appear. This door is entirely optional. There is no reason to go in this door, and it will add more to your time, so it's not really necessary. But I wanted to show that off, because it's here, and it's a cool-looking place. And uh, we're going to get probably a big mistake here with Luster Staff, because if I recall correctly, I think uh, ev almost everyone dies here. Because <laughs> you have to deal with these wind currents going by and everything, and you have to then also get these... Uh, Bomb blocks hit, and if you don't get there in time enough, you have to go back, down, and around. Which doesn't seem too bad right now. But then if I also make mistakes like that, and as we'll see in some later installments of this long tower-ish area. Oh, I, see, I got it, and then I didn't get the ladder. Okay, here we go. So here, next next section. But see, see, now Gordos are here, and Gordos are not nice. Now Spikes are here, and Spikes are not nice. So you can kind of see where, where this becomes a bit of a problem. I think if we had Koo here, we could actually beat the air currents, but uh, we don't have Koo, so that sucks to be us. So there we got that, got that, got on the left, nope. <laughs> Here's me desperately trying to, because the problem is the AI is not very great about dodging things if there's a, when there's a wooden current. I honestly don't think the AI in this game is that bad, uh, but uh, when it comes to a few things, like Wind Current, for example, the AI is like, I don't know what to do. So I'm trying to preserve all of them, because if I lose Megalore here, he's gone. We're not. There's no way we're going to get him back, because I don't think there's another way he can get a, uh, a Dream Friend Rod. And oh, <laughs> so I have the right idea there, but Megalore's dash is too good, so it went past the ladder. Okay, it's, it's okay, everyone. It's okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. We can do this. We can do this. Uh. Oh, now we gotta fight a mini boss with the air current. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can revive them, so long as I don't die. So I just need everyone else to survive. This is, this is why this is over half an hour, because I was taking too long in this one area, which is an area that we don't even need to go to. <laughs> okay, once that is all done. We get here, to this nice, heart-shaped area. It's really cool. It's very adorable, and it's very pretty. So, you can get a lot of extra lives here, get a lot of puzzle pieces here. It's mainly in the main game now, so if you're playing the game fresh, you can use this as a nice area to grind for some puzzle pieces, because it's a lot that it'll give you for one stage. As well as grind for lives, which... You may think, well, I don't need those, and, um... Have you played with children who are about the ages of, uh, eight or six? Because I have. And let me tell you, we wasted all of our lives very fast. Anywho's, that will do it for this episode of Let's Play Kirby Star Allies, Guest Star Allies Go. 
If you like this video, as always, please consider hitting that like button below. If you want to see more content from me, please consider subscribing. Kirby Star Allies is available on Nintendo Switch. Go pick up this wonderfully adorable game, and maybe get some friends, and have a good time, and just goof off. I mean, you saw how easy it is to get extra lives. Just, just goof off. It doesn't matter if you lose a, a life for two or two hundred. Someone will find that game over screen. <laughs> I do like it though. It makes it's the what the Kirby series should be accessible for everyone. Uh, pick it up uh, again. All the DLC is out now, so you can get the entire game the way I'm playing it straight out of the box. So then you're ready to go. Otherwise, please have a wonderfully great day, and I will see you for the next Guest Star Allies video, in which we'll take on the second half of level two. And then I will then kick myself to remind myself at that point of, hey, by the way, did you record level 3 yet? And then be like, oh, snapples. I should probably do that. Shush, shush, shush. But in all seriousness, have a wonderfully great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, ciao!